Hello, my name is Anderson LaFont, and I'm here from the University of Arkansas at Little Rock's Student Technology Advocacy Team to show you how to make better PowerPoints. Why use a slideshow? The benefits of using a graphical presentation such as a PowerPoint lie in the visual connection you can make to the verbal message you're communicating. Using this dual approach, one can increase the effectiveness of a presentation and facilitate learning that takes place on multiple sensory levels. Despite these advantages, there are numerous ways in which a PowerPoint can be inefficient or become too cumbersome. Therefore, to maximize our educational standards, students must be wary of certain pitfalls, including presentations that are too text-heavy, especially if they are the essentially verbatim speaking notes used by the presenter, and presentations that do not emphasize the sensory advantages of a graphical tool like PowerPoint. Generally, the two types of presentation issues students will run into are choices about the textual content of slides and the design of slides. Textual advice. The textually oriented guidelines for what to avoid in a graphical presentation are using inconsistent fonts, lack of relevant images, and the presence of distracting noises or animations. Ideally, for graphical presentations, unless your instructor requests otherwise, you want to use a common sans serif font that is less obstructive to the eye. Fonts smaller than 18 point are not recommended, and titles should always directly introduce the viewer to the presentation topic. The multiple fonts present in this slide highlight the problems in distracting presentations. They call attention to style rather than the substance of the subject matter. Obstructive and rude capitalization. I don't think readers, you included, would appreciate being shouted at orally. It stands to reason, then, that they would not enjoy it in writing either. In addition, using all caps makes your writing really hard to read and gives an aggressive attribute to the slide. Design advice. It's key to focus your design around the most apt and efficient means. Don't overuse photographs, and when you do use them, make sure they are non-distracting and relevant to the topic. Avoid using disruptive sounds and animated text or graphics. This cannot be stressed enough. A clear and relevant graphical slide. The image clearly leaves the text unobscured by its own coloration. This involves a tactical awareness in your image and design choice. The text introduces the subject matter in a directly accessible way. By contrast, here is a highly illegible slide. The text and graphics on this slide are a textbook example of near-complete visual conflict. The text is neutralized by the background tones, leaving the title and items of interest in a chameleon-like invisibility. In addition, the picture has no clear relevance to the topic being discussed. In this next slide, the image's size and placement and the title are well done and are a good example of conservatism within design. However, the text colors used here are distracting and not used in a meaningful way where they could be warranted, such as color coding relevant information on a slide or on a piece of statistical data. As a necessary aside, this confusion can only be magnified by the use of colors not visible to the colorblind. Even what seems to be a clearly legible slide can be compromised by not taking into consideration the diversity of your audience. For example, small text can be difficult for nearsighted individuals to read. In this next portion, we'll talk about how a large chunk of text in one spatial location on a slide is hard on the eyes, as are lengthy lists that don't follow the pace of the individual giving the presentation. We'll also talk about how avoiding informality and using citations are the keys to being taken seriously when giving a presentation. Remind you of the capitalization slide? Lists are an especially good way to keep yourself from reading an entire slide to a class. Not only does a block of text like this make it difficult for students to process key points quickly, it takes the focus away from you, the presenter, and your expertise. Plus, it means that your audience is bored and will probably be staring at your backside, which is not exactly conducive to traditional academic demeanor. Proper use of lists. Effective use of lists can help direct the focus of your audience and helps avoid lengthy expositions that are more the job of the presenter to vocalize. In addition, it helps not to place the audience too directly into less important elements of research. Lists help avoid the cognitive load factor of memorization and, the dire and direct the audience from the PowerPoint back to the speaker for more precise elaboration on key points. I'd like to show you an example of how good lists can improve one's ability to recall information. Take 10 seconds to try to remember all of these items. Alright, pause the video and see if you can recall all nine items from the prior slide. How many were you able to remember? Probably not very much, but what if I showed them to you in a different format? Now the items are grouped by type, with spaces separating the groups. This will make it much easier to remember all of the items. Here's an example of a really well done list, taking full advantage of the graphical portion of programs like PowerPoint. Note how even though the same items are listed, because of the color coding, grouping, and large text, it doesn't seem like so much information. The next thing we'll talk about is spacing. Spacing is vital to a good presentation. 
Just as clunky blocks of text were just shown to be problematic in a graphical presentation, so is improper spacing. Usually one line in between each major bullet point can make a huge difference in the visual element of the slide, make it more accessible. The ineffectiveness of an informal presentation. The following is a list of informal acronyms often used on the internet or in text communication and are never ever to be used in a professional or academic presentation, graphical or otherwise. Using these informalities takes away from the seriousness of your presentation and makes you appear less credible. On the subject of credibility, citations. Citations are not only for essay assignments. Proper citation of research and other resources used in your presentation add to the professionalism and reliability of what you're saying. It's also an indicator to your academic or professional peers and instructor or boss that you took the time to find out how your resources should be cited in the way that the field of your class or work normally dictates. Goal integrity. It's crucial that your PowerPoint or other graphical presentation not only meets the design and textual guidelines provided, but that these implemented slides capture all required assignment goals. Keeping goal integrity in mind will help prevent you your presentation from falling into irrelevance. Styles. PowerPoint and other similar programs have many creative possibilities that can be used without causing distraction, lack of visual focus, or losing clarity. Try to find a style that is consistent, one that flows. Don't change your style partway through. The addition or removal of the title area is fine, though, as long as the slide calls for it. Lastly, don't choose styles that are visually obstructive or make the slide difficult to read. Remember, your audience is watching. The combination of both audio and visual components of a PowerPoint have the potential to be the perfect vehicle for verbal and visual rhetoric, evenly balanced by the aesthetic of moderate detail that doesn't intrude on one's core message. The integrity of what is presented is maintained by balancing all of these components in a way that engages the viewer without overstimulating them or distorting the point of the presentation. If you use this advice and are diligent, you are guaranteed to make a great PowerPoint. From the University of Arkansas at Little Rock's Student Technology Advocacy Team, this is Anderson LaFont. Thank you for watching.